getting it, getting there, for lack of a better word, send them with uh, a national retail chain that is uh, that can give us that awesome brand exposure from a national retail standpoint, but also our online business uh, with, is one of one of the big things that I'm looking for for somebody to be able to just click buy now on the on the, on the Sip Still Moon website and get that bottle delivered directly to them. I think it's going to be a, a huge uh, bonus for us. So I think they I think they go hand in hand. I think one gives us the exposure, but I think having access to our product is probably the, the big probably. benefit that I'm looking for in, in the next year. And do you think that, um, and this is for the two of you since this have got on the line and everything, but do you see that your sales both maintaining your nine-to-five jobs, or are you hoping that at some point this business takes off to such a point that you can leave the nine-to-five alone? And I know that you both enjoy your nine-to-fives, but do you hope to be able to leave the nine-to-five and just be 100% entrepreneurs? I don't enjoy my nine to five that much. (laughs) (laughs) No, but the thing is that, you know, we all had been in our roles for decades before we got involved with this. And what's been good is that while I know normally you would expect that all of us would be clamoring for that day when either collectively or one by one we could leave what we're doing as our day job, And do this, and that really hasn't been our focus. In fact, this is the first conversation that we have had about that being a primary objective because it's not. I mean, what we really are trying to do is to build a company, to build a brand, to reinvest our profits into growing it further. Because, quite frankly, we have dreams even beyond Still Moon. You know, the company is actually. The the parent company is Down South Beverage Company. And so we have dreams of other beverage lines uh, and other product lines that may leverage the Steel Moon brand or other brand names. Um, And so, you know, we're not focused on, okay, when do the sales get to be big enough that we can quit our day job? We're, We're just trying to reinvest and keep growing this thing to make it into a significant corporation. But I've imagined that all of you are also probably involved in trying to get, and not force them into the industry, but we've had this conversation with several of the entrepreneurs that we've had, as well as several of the creatives and even some of the activists, because that's what we consider kind of our primary focus on this show. But I'm thinking that y'all are probably all trying to think about generational wealth as well, because I don't care what the business is. I would even argue Allison's business with her PR probably fits it within that generational wealth as well, which is maybe that you don't want to get the kids involved in the business, but you want to be able for it to help provide opportunities, whether that's them coming into the business or whether that's them using the business as a tool to create their own business. Right. I mean, definitely when we all started thinking about entrepreneurship, our focus was on building a legacy. Um, And that is definitely still something of interest. But at the same time, I think that we all know that, you know, We don't know exactly how the end point is going to play out here. And, you know, it may be that we end up growing so large that we need to make sure that we've got someone in who has the training, the expertise, uh, the experience to run a beverage company or to run a food company. Um, And while there are one or two of our children who are putting themselves on that track, they're not necessarily doing it with a focus to then take this over. They're out there getting their experience at you know, major companies, major corporations um, across the country. And I'm sure you're right, at some point we may tap them to get involved. But um, right now we're just focused on product development and finding new accounts and getting people to know about the brand and just really putting the best product out there that we can. It seems like y'all have done a wonderful job. Um, I want Dean to play another spot for me real quick, and then I'll come back to all three of you and everything. But before I let everybody let y'all go on that, um, if you could give me the website and how people can get in touch with you one more time that are listening, because, you know, we'll also be re-airing it on Skyhawk next uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So if you just let folks know how they can reach out to you as they're listening and learning about this wonderful product. Okay. You want that now? Yes, please. Okay. Yep. So it's sipstillmoon.com. S-I-P, stillmoon, 
uh, com. And, and again, that's really because this is the original sipping shine. This is not something that, um, I mean, this is something that you really want to savor. So sipstillmoon.com. From there, we have a contact form so that you can email us. We have all of our social media linked to that uh, place, uh, that site, and so you can get from there to our Facebook page, our Instagram, our Twitter, all of our accounts. So that's definitely the, the easiest way. Okay. And, Allison, before I uh, have uh, Dean run with at least one more spot, I think I had a call coming on my personal phone that I need to return back to them because I think that they were the third guest or the fifth guest. I've lost track of the numbers. But uh, the um, what did you think of social media? Because they mentioned social media a couple of times, and I was wondering how effective is social media as a marketing and PR tool, Allison? Social media is extremely important, especially for a product. Um, there are so many ways that you can get your message out other than just saying this is our product. It's like they're doing on their website with sharing recipes. So it's just being creative and posting content and then obviously using um, targeted ads that you can do through social media to target your market. And there's all different you know, ways that you can figure that out. But it, you can really get down a uh, very niche, which is great, so you know specifically who's seeing that ad and, and versus if you were to do a TV ad where you're just hoping that somebody sees it, this is a great way to really hone in on who you want to see um, your ad. Also, Instagram stories are huge, Facebook stories now. There's so many different ways that you can get your message out and have other people share. So when other people are, are trying the product and they're making, you know, drinks with it, and whether it's a Moscow Mule or, or a summer drink, they're now tagging the company in it, and then you can share it to your story. So it's such a powerful tool. Um, I, I, every company obviously should have Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter, and, uh, and they do. So they, they, they've got it up there, and I would just probably recommend maybe posting a little bit more often um, when I was quickly taking a look at it. But, it, I mean, you can have amazing pictures, too. And your, the bottle is gorgeous. It's not your typical mason jar, as you had mentioned. So, um, yeah, just I keep posting and keep being having different uh, topics and different items that you can promote and have engaged with other people, too. Because one of the things I found fascinating, and like I said, I still want Dean to run that one other spot, but one of the things I found really fascinating is that we just did an event at Hey Tide with a young man. Now, he was doing his art show, and I do sometimes think that not so much the seasoned veteran entrepreneur like these people are and like some of our other guests have been, but I do sometimes think that our young people get too caught up in only using social media as their marketing tool because they'll oftentimes come up to me and you got to remember, the, and the other people on the line will know this, but hey, guys, an event center. So they'll post and they'll get thousands of hits on Facebook. Now, given some of these hits might be in Croatia. The, they're really pumped uh-huh. up about the fact that they've got tens of thousands of hits and they're thinking that they're going to have a large audience. And then they only get like 30 people or like 40 people or something of that nature. So I do sometimes think that particularly our young entrepreneurs get too caught up on some of our social media as a crutch without using the rest of the media plan. Not so much the seasoned veterans like what we have here and like what we've had on some of our other shows, but I do sometimes think that our young people sometimes get too caught up on social media. Would you agree with that, Allison? I do agree, and I think that even business owners, I mean, you see, especially if you want to reach out to social media influencers to help promote your product, something that we always say is they could have, you know, a million likes or a million followers, but where are they organic or are they paid? Because sometimes they get, you know, paid likes. So you want to look at engagement. How many comments are they getting? Are they just are they real comments? Are they, you know, as we call them, bots, where it's just somebody will just say, great, amazing, love it. So you really want to dive into to see are they connecting with their audience. And sometimes we actually tell clients to go for influencers that don't have a huge following. We call them nano-influencers or micro-influencers because their audience is smaller, but they're way more engaged with them. So I do think that you have to look at the big picture and you can't rely just on social media. And um, and don't just get you know blown away by the likes or followers because that doesn't always mean anything. Exactly, Dean. Can you drop me two spots because I think I had a call and I need to see if they're going to call in in the next fifteen minutes. So if you could do that, I'll call them and I'll call right back in. Hey, listen, we want to thank right. you for we'll having do. us on. Thank no you. No problem. I was glad to have you. Okay. 
Are you enjoying the smoothest conversation in podcasting? Straight talk with Dean and Mark. Hi, this is DJ Smooth Jazz, syndicated radio host and co-owner of Portfolio Group, LLC. Your smooth jazz lifestyle and entertainment group with offices in Durham, North Carolina. Portfolio Group, LLC specializes in promoting the lifestyle of smooth jazz listeners with the promotion of smooth jazz events and the distribution of African-American-owned wines. For more information, PortfolioGroupLLC.com, or you can swing by my secondary site, DJSmoothJazz.com. Now back to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Bass players, best thing you can do for your overall sound. You've got to see this. New Bass Tone Incorporated makes Nightwalker bass guitar tube preamps. This preamp will give your sound such a boost, it's just incredible. Try it today. Try it today now. A great sounding bass guitar will make for a great sounding band. Make your band sound at its best. Best thing you can do for your bass guitar sound. NewBassTone.com NewBassTone.com Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting FeedingAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Get back All there, right, Dean. we're back. Yeah, we are. All right, cool. Yeah, we're back to continue the conversation. I think that the Drink Still Moon folks might have left the building, but definitely Allison is still here. So, Allison, what are some of the other advices that you would give to people that are into just marketing in general? We talked about some of the things that people do can do wrong, like doing too much dependability on social media, but what are some of the other things that you have found that people uh, make as a mistake in terms of, doing their social media and in terms of doing business in general? I'm sure there are tons of mistakes that you have observed that you try to steer your clients away from. Oh, yes. <laughs> One of the things that I think a lot of companies, and we all are, you know, we all do it, is we try and, and sell too much, right? So social media, it's not really a place to sell. I think I read something where you're only really supposed to kind of like promote yourself or sell your product 10% of the time. The rest of the time, it just should be engaging. So, you know, you can still talk about your product, but in a, in a way that it doesn't come off as like, buy our sunscreen. It's the best sunscreen. It will do this. It will do that. It, you have to tell stories. Social media, just like PR, it's all about storytelling. People go on there because they want you know, they want stories. They don't want to be sold. It's kind of the same thing. We tell people on LinkedIn all the time not to, you know, immediately when you connect with somebody, don't just message them and say, hello, I, I do this. Can we set up an appointment? And, you know, you have to get to know people and build that relationship. And that's the same thing with social media. If you have people who follow you, you, you want to connect with them and you don't want to keep shoving it down their throat of why they should use your service, why they should buy your product. They'll figure it out themselves, and you want to add value. So if you um, are, you know, a, a wine company or your sunscreen company, give stories, show people, give testimonials, uh, talk about, you know, you don't always have to talk about yourself either. It could be, um, you know, a Friday and just show your staff having, you know, a fun on a Friday. Or if it's a national cake day, show your team eating cake or ask people what's their favorite cake. It doesn't have to be anything about your brand as long as you're, you know, do, follow what's trending. Um, I would stay away from politics. A lot of companies will go there, and you really should not do that because it's just you don't like to mix business with politics. Uh, same thing with religion. Unless you really want to take a stance on something and you're good with that, but we try and have people stay away from that. But uh, have fun on social media. I think people get nervous about it and think too much about it. Uh, make sure your branding is consistent as well. Uh, your, you know, all of your logos and your colors and all of that matches your website. You know, simple things like that. And, you know, if you can't do it yourself because you're really busy, see if you can get an intern or somebody that can perhaps post, uh, you know, a couple of times 
you know, a day. I mean, 